Hey YouTube, it's JP Dillon. Today we're looking at a late 1940s Emerson. Now I forget what model number this actually is. It's a all Bakelite set with a 10 inch CRT. This belongs to a fan of the channel and it, he's been on the waiting list a long time. And yes, if I sound croupy and crappy, it's because I made the mistake of going in an old moldy funky building without a respirator and got a sinus infection. That was fun. So I'm recovering from that, so if I don't sound like myself, that's the reason why. Anyway, uh, long story short, this was at another tech uh, who went through it to an extent and replaced some critical components in order to get it working, and it did work for a time, but the CRT was very tired. So the owner went and got another CRT and had the guy swap it out, uh, but then it mysteriously stopped working. Uh, meaning there was sound, but no picture. Filaments would light up and all that sort of thing, but no no actual visible light on the screen. And so he brought it to me, and we're going to try to figure this one out. So let's go ahead and get it out of the cabinet first, since we're not really going to work on it here inside of the Bakelite cabinet. As you can see in there, it's a very tight fit. Um, before we go too much further... Let's go ahead and test the CRT and see if the replacement CRT, which is supposed to be good, is in fact good. And today we're going to break out probably the last of the real CRT testers, which is the Syncor CR7000. This was a very expensive thing in its time. This was about $1,000 in 1990s money. Uh, and it is very accurate at portraying all the little things that can go wrong with a CRT, uh, grid leakage, cathode failure, um, it really gives you a good idea as to the real health of a CRT rather than just an emissions tester. So I'm always willing to yank this thing out uh, when we have a CRT that could be called questionable. So here's my little CRT setup book. And even if you don't have a listing that goes back this far, like I don't think this one goes back to the days of the 10 BP4. I think these are color CRTs too. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. 10S. It's all in alphabetical order. Yeah, son of a gun. 10 BP4. And let's see, it's gonna, it says you want to use the UA for the universal adapter, which we have. Because you're essentially just clipping it onto the CRT. There's, they don't have adapters for this that go back that far. So let's get that out and wire it up. And here's your universal. Mostly I use this for color CRTs. Um... Like, you know, here's newer inline gun stuff. Here's older Delta stuff. Uh, black and white. Early color. Or not early color. Eh. Um, that's another black and white one. That's one of those miniature black and white tubes. I don't know why the exposure on this is going nuts. Trinitron. So... I don't have an early color socket for this. I do for my CR70, but you can just use the universal. So let's get this all hooked up. Yeah, let's see. Filament one is going to go on pin one, and filament two is going to go on. Pin 8, and then let's see, G1, I'm pretty sure is, or is it 8, 1, and 2, yeah, I forget, I think it's 7, 8, 1, never remember, anyways, um, this should actually be G1, This should be G2, and I think this back here, for the black and whites, they say use the green cathode, so we'll do that. 
So we should be wired up there. Let's connect it to the tester. All right, so for a 10 BP Ford, it wants a 52 volt bias. Let's see, it's going to be type video one. And yeah, let's see. Oh, it tells you what pins to hook it up to. Well, that's handy. Two and ten. Interesting. Or is it? Oh, we'll find out, won't we? Let's see. Four to eight volt filament. Let's turn the filament down. And we're going to bring this up to 6.3 volts. Let's see, we're lighting up here. Yes, we are. Give it a minute. Let's turn our cutoffs down and we can set that. Um, this indicates a no short because we don't have the blue and red hooked up, obviously, since it's a black and white CRT. Really? Heater to cathode short. Eh, not good. All right, let's see if we have any cutoff. Nope. Maybe I don't have this wired up correctly. Because it seems strange that I would have an HK short. Okay, standby. All right, according to this, I have this wired up correctly. Um, 1 and 12 are the filaments. So we got 12 and 1 here. And then 11 is supposed to be our cathode. Yep, got that wired up right. G1 is supposed to be pin 2. And they say G2 is supposed to be pin 10. But I don't have a pin 10 here. Um... And placing this on any other any other pin here doesn't yield me any more emission. Now what's funny is that I had hooked this thing up to a Beltron and it gave me emission. Um, but this one says no. It says it's got a heater to cathode short. All right. So, I have another 10 BP4 that he brought me. Uh, so, let's test that one against this one. All right, so I've got my other 10 BP4 all hooked up here. Let me put this down a second. And we're going to fire it up again. I'm trying to hold the clips on here because some of them don't want to cooperate. All right. Let me just... Put this down here momentarily so we're going to switch over to shorts cut off and tracking none yeah it just doesn't register so maybe there's just something about this something is weird So I don't know. Um, yeah, it just says bad too, but we're not getting any emission out of that. And I find that hard to believe considering the Beltron says it and we he said he had a picture on it. Well, anyways, since I know it reads on the Beltron is good and we're just not getting any reading here no matter what, I'm going to assume that I have a funky adapter or there's just something about this tester that doesn't agree with this too. Anyway, moving on. See, the Beltron registers it just fine. So I'm beginning to wonder if there's something going on with that tester. And I need to take it apart and figure out what's going on with it. Because it's not happy with uh, the CRT. So this could be not telling me something. So we don't know. What we're going to do now is pull the chassis out and run it. And then take some high voltage measurements and stuff. And see if uh, the chassis is doing what it's supposed to be doing. All right, so let's fire this bad boy up. Two and 
tube filaments or lighting. I hear the high voltage coming up. Yeah, I can feel a little bit of static on the screen. But there is no light whatsoever. Okay. So, we got our high voltage probe here. And we're going to see if we can get any high voltage because it may be there and we're just not getting enough of it. We're getting seven kilovolts there. So that's, it's supposed to have 10, but seven should yield a picture. We should be getting something and we're just not. So now we got to check and see if we have screen and grid voltages for the CRT, because I think something's amiss there. So let me turn this off a second. It's also true that this thing has an ion trap on it and you don't know whether the tube that this is is supposed to have it or not. It could be a rebuild that doesn't need it. You don't know. But we're going to get the cover off this and take some measurements and see if we can figure out if the CRT is getting the proper screen and grid voltages. So there's our socket cover that's off. So I should be getting screen and grid voltages here and a cathode voltage there. So let's go ahead and turn this on again and wait for the high voltage to come up. All right, and let's take a look and see what we're getting at the CRT here. 3 volts on the cathode and much, 6 volts on the grid, 212 on the screen. Whew. Alright, so that grid voltage seems awfully low. And let's see, cathode voltage seems awfully low too. Now if I turn the brightness down... That voltage should go up a little bit, and it doesn't. I think the brightness controls the cathode to ground on this. Nothing on either of those pins. So I got 230 volts on the screen, 155 on the grid when I turn the voltage down here. The brightness down, rather. I turn the brightness all the way up, and the control grid voltage goes way down. Cathode voltage remains the same. So cathode is like way negative to the grid. The grid should always be more negative to the cathode. So something's definitely gone wrong here in the video output circuit. That's what we need to look at. Grid should always be negative in relationship to the cathode. So the fact that we have positive grid in relation to the cathode says the tube's in cutoff. That's why we're not getting any voltage. So let me see if I can dig up a schematic on this thing and identify what it is. And then we'll take a look at what the voltages should be. Uh, at first glance though, let me trace this back. And I'm looking for the yellow and green wires and where they go. Yellow goes underneath there. And the green also goes underneath there. So let's trace out where those go. So here's a look at the previous workmanship, which has its pluses and minuses. Uh, I'm not really thrilled about the workmanship here, but... So, the green wire, which is the cathode, comes down to this point here. And we've got a bypass capacitor there. 
and then it goes to that 220k and then ends up there at that dividing point with that big blob of solder on it so i wonder if that 220k uh, is open or something going on there let's take a quick measurement now oh, that dude's still pretty good looking and the downside of that we have that 270k which is still within tolerance i think that's not going to piss off the circuit enough to make it stop working so now we have to take a look at the grid and the grid is this yellow wire that comes down and terminates here and again we have a bypass capacitor to ground which is that guy there and then this goes off down this gray wire hold on and the gray wire comes up and terminates at the uh, brightness control over here that's the center tap for the brightness control and then the high side of the brightness control goes back down this mess we need to find out where that terminates at all right so the brightness control comes down here and terminates at this point this feed resistor here which is 100k is still good the 47k uh, is like 52 or 53 so that's not going to be it either so we do need to check this amplifier tube here which i believe is the video out and also somebody has floated that brightness control off ground by 4.7k i'm not sure if that's supposed to be how it is but uh i might go across that to feed the uh change the cathode voltage somewhat anyways um, and then I also have to think of maybe the CRT is the reason why the voltages are wrong it could be bad we don't really know uh, the tester says it's good at least the Beltron does and I kind of want to stick the old tube back in there that he had and see what it looks like there but anyways this is the 6SN7, which that brightness control is tied to. Um, so let's see if this is okay. Somebody's marked it with transconductance values, but that didn't mean it didn't fail. So let's test it real quick. First section, test fine. No shorts or gas. Second section, test fine. No shorts or gas. So, not that guy. Okay, now what I'm going to do is go around this 4.7K to ground from the control and see if we can't change our cathode voltage some. Come on, wakey, wakey. That's strange. Now I'm like not getting any high voltage. Oh, there we go. Okay, still no brightness on the screen. Let's see what our voltages look like with that 4.7 bypassed. So the cathode's at essentially ground potential now of course the grid's at ground potential now so that really doesn't do anything for us it means the tube doesn't do much of anything now so if i remove that and we go back to our 4.7 we have seven volts on the grid and three volts on the cathode so that's very strange uh, 
almost makes me want to swap the CRTs. Because this is just weird. Like, we should be seeing something here. Let's turn the lights out. Yeah, even with a, the lights out, a dark face, you just don't see anything on here. I'm going to move the ion trap a little bit. Nothing. You just don't see any light on the screen whatsoever. So, I'm beginning to wonder if this replacement CRT is in fact a dud. And the old one wasn't great, but at least it produced an image of some kind. So let me disconnect the CRT and see if our voltages change at all. Yeah, here's the weird thing. Like, with the CRT totally disconnected, the grid voltage is about the same. And the cathode voltage is about the same. So... And the screen voltage is the same. So it's almost like it's not even in circuit. There should be some kind of a change there. That's not doing squat. So it makes me wonder if this is in fact bad somehow. Because uh, it's just not doing anything. You know, there should at least be some kind of sign of life. Of course, I push all the pins out. But I mean, just, there's no change. So, there should be some kind of a change here that occurs if the tube was in circuit. So, I'm, I'm just wondering if it's a dud. So, we may just end up swapping out the, uh, the CRT. I wonder what happens if I plug in the other one. Okay, so, I have the CRT the extra one kind of wired up here and yeah, let's see it glowing in there i have it wrapped in bubble wrap because you know things happen uh so let's go to our grid here still only got six volts there 195 so it's pulling down the screen quite a bit still three volts on the cathode and I don't have the high voltage hooked up, so obviously it's not going to be really easy to figure out what's going on there. But yeah, it was uh, the screen voltage was much higher on the other one, suggesting it wasn't loading as much. I doubt that we're going to see anything here because there's no high voltage hooked up. But yeah... So I'm, it's just odd. Like I should have some sign of change here. The grid is so positive to the relationship of the cathode, it just doesn't seem right to me. Let's see if we can find a schematic on this thing. So the closest thing I found so far is a 637, which seems to use a very similar version to this chassis. Uh, and we're supposed to have 9K, we have 7. That probably wouldn't kill the picture. If we chase down, see they talk about pin 10 being the second grid, but I'm not sure what they see as pin 10. Because I don't think I have a pin 10 on that socket. Uh, I definitely have an 11. And they don't list... That's interesting. They don't list this as having pin 3 or pin 4. Um, of course, I could be wrong in the way that this is set up. But pin 2 uh, is your control grid. So... Maybe the CRT is wired wrong. Maybe it had a different CRT in it at all. I don't really know. Uh, they don't print any voltages here other than the high voltage mark, which is kind of annoying. 
like pin 11 is your cathode. They don't tell you what the voltage is supposed to be there, only the way it's set up. So this is really just kind of an annoyance. And it makes me wonder, I mean, it used to work, so what's different about now? Did it not have a 10 BP4 in it? Did it have another variant of it? So I really don't know because there's no identifying marks on this chassis. I'm just looking at what I find familiar. This is just kind of a head scratcher at this point. And you see, here's the data sheet for the 10 BP4. And it could just be that I'm reading this incorrectly the whole time. So I was thinking that pin 2 was the cathode. The pin 2 would have the 3 volts on it that was would have been negative in relation to the cathode, which had 7 volts on it. So it is more negative. It's a 3 volt difference. Uh, still doesn't seem right um, because, you know, you're supposed to have, what, 58 volts bias according to the tester. But, yeah, let's take a look here and see if there's anything that's interesting. Yeah, so grid 1 voltage is supposed to be minus 27 to minus 63 in relation to the cathode. The screen voltage was spot on. I was getting 250 something volts there. So, definitely need to look in Look at the cathode circuit. Look at the grid circuit. And it's supposed to have an ion trap. Just spinning my wheels on this one at this point. Okay, so now knowing that I have the cathode and the grid reversed, now we can go through the tests and we can see there's no heater to cathode short, there's no grid short. We go to cutoff. Eh, tube doesn't have any cutoff. But it has okay emission if we crank it. Uh, let's actually put it on the proper bias setting. There we go. Hell, look, we have cutoff. So, this tube's hot. So, we should be getting a nice bright picture here for sure. So, now we just need to figure out what chassis this is, get the right schematic for it. And definitely troubleshoot the um, video output and maybe the high voltage. With 2,000 volts drop from 9, cause it to be a completely black screen. I don't think so. I think it would be dim and blurry, but it should work. But this is, oh, it's going to blink bad because we're not, you know, it's not a color CRT. That's just how it is, but... It's got good cutoff. This thing's happy, man. So, good CRT. So the way this is working, with uh, pin 2, this area here, that's your control grid. Because um, these are all blocking capacitors up here. And they're supposed to keep this voltage on pin 2 way negative in relationship to the cathode. And right now we're only about 5 volts negative. We're supposed to have between about 27 and 50 uh, volts negative in relationship to the cathode. So really, we have to go to pin 11, and that's our brightness control, which is down here. Uh, check the value of those resistors here and here, and they're good. The control's good. And then this comes up to the plate circuit on the 12AU7. Um, so we need to check and see what the supply voltage here is on V15. This 12AU7 is definitely not right, uh, because we should have, you know, 50 to 60 volts there. So we need to check this circuit. Um, and then <clears throat> once we get our grid voltage happy in relation to the cathode, so the cathode's always going to be higher. And when you crank the brightness up and down, the cathode voltage is supposed to change in relationship to the uh, grid voltage. So that's what we need to look at realistically. But um, now that we kind of understand how the circuit works, 
we can go about troubleshooting that, and that'll be in the next episode. So, sorry to ramble and fumble about this one. Not quite myself yet, but uh, we're definitely on the way to getting this fixed since we've been able to validate that the CRT is in fact good, and I'm just an idiot. It can't wire it up right for a tester. So, stay tuned for the next episode, and uh, thanks for watching.